I thought I'd do a short follow-up video related to polar coordinates and in particular how um, your calculator that has trig functions on it um, is not able to work with aspects of polar um, perfectly 100% of the time. Um, the conversion for x always works and the conversion for y and the conversion for finding the radius, no problems there. But it's this tangent of theta equals y over x um, works great if uh, you don't care what quadrant theta is in, but it's not a perfect formula. It does get used for some equation conversions, but we're just looking at coordinates. And in particular, what if we need to find that angle theta? So we're going to look at an example here. What if we we're going to take the point negative 3, 4, which lies here in um, the second quadrant, if that's the y and that's the x-axis. And if we were to sort of build a triangle here, that would be r. And r in this case is going to be 5, because we have ourselves a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, thanks to Pythagorean's theorem. And I'm going to just finish off the triangle here. But that would be our theta right there. That would be our value of theta. So we can see that r equals 5. Um, now, according to our little conversion formula, the tangent of theta would be y divided by x. And I using my calculator in degree mode here because degrees are easier for us to imagine uh, where they might be located and in my calculator if i use the inverse tangent operation theta is approximately negative 53.13 degrees my students and others that would be down here that angle would be the negative 53.13 degrees and that's in quadrant four not in quadrant two so if you have a little picture drawn it may not be too difficult to just sort of imagine what comes next well we could say in degrees if you just add 180 degrees um, we could say then that theta is approximately equal to uh, 126.87 degrees. Now, my students know that we typically write our solutions in radians, so we'll come back to that in a moment. Again, the calculator with tangent will never give you that second quadrant answer, and that has to do with the restrictions for inverse trig functions, a term that you kind of hear about and even play with in a trig or pre-calculus course but you really kind of need to understand it here for the little details or draw a picture and do a little bit of uh, uh, computing afterwards, depending on what quadrant you're in. So let me just do a little comparison here. If I had used the same triangle um, I had drawn originally and used the sine function, the sine of theta would have been uh, y over r, which would be four-fifths. That's a five there. doesn't look like it. In this case, theta is actually going to be a positive 53.13 degrees, which is in the first quadrant, not even in the second or fourth quadrants. And if you were to use the cosine of theta is x over r, negative three over five, um, this would give you theta that is approximately the 126.87 degrees, the one that we are very much interested in. That one works. Now, my students know that if we're not uh, using calculators, you need some form of an exact answer. Um, that's how we might leave it on an exam or a quiz question if we weren't using technology that particular time. So some exact answers. We can see that the inverse 
cosine of negative three-fifths was an exact answer. And uh, my students know that they're welcome to use the inverse notation if they wish to. But I prefer the, the arc notation for just teacher funny reasons. But I like both notations when I read them. If we use the tangent, theta would be equal to the inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds. But you'd have to add 180 degrees, or in case of radians, you have to add pi to it. And finally, if we use the sine, sine gave us the value in quadrant 1. Again, hit pause. Look at the picture. See where that came out. And one way to do it would be to start at 180 degrees, or pi radians, and subtract the inverse sine of 4 fifths. And that would be an exact value. I am a big fan of using cosines inverse. It's the only one of the three primary calculator buttons that provides values that go from 0 to pi, which will be kind of a big deal in some future lessons we hit. Remember, polar coordinates is a review topic for this particular class. So you kind of need to be able to work with it quickly. Not too many coordinate conversions in our work that we're going to do, but we need to be able to look at the pictures for some future boundaries. Thank you much. Catch you later.